There now I got go. it. Sorry about that. Got it. Okay, good. Going on mute now. Okay, thank you. Um, good evening. And I hope we all have some fun tonight. Um, my presentation on how to work a DXCC on six meters comes with a money back guarantee. So if this 12 step method does not work for you, I'm happy to refund the price of admission. Uh, I have a lot of information to cover, so I'm gonna keep things moving. And let's see, here we go. First uh, introduction, um, I was licensed in uh, 2009 and became interested in the Magic Band right away. Read a lot of books at the time, talked about how the peak of the solar cycles were going to uh, uh, work uh, uh, worldwide DX. Well, um, after uh, the first peak there, uh, I didn't, realized that uh, unless I had a time machine, that's gonna work in DXCC on six meters was gonna be really difficult. It is difficult, but it's not impossible. So uh, some of my um, things I've accomplished, uh, DXCC on six meters, uh, number 1926, I have 115 entities right now, worked all states on six meters, that is a little harder than it sounds. Um, the UCC on six meters, uh, I've completed uh, DXCC on 10 bands now. Um, so so for uh, the first thing to uh, talk about is uh, propagation. So forget everything you know about HF propagation because this is a different world. Um, and F2 propagation requires very high FU or MU, excuse me, uh, uh, at a time we're seeing declining uh, peaks in the solar cycle. We are approaching a new one, and you may see some excellent six meter uh, DX, but sporadic E is the main driver for. Uh, six meter propagation and will remain the main driver. Uh, working uh, sporadic E uh, requires multiple hops if you want to work DX. So it gets tricky. Step one, make some goals. So uh, I, I had some six meter goals to have fun, number one. Uh, work uh, BUCC, work all states, increase my challenge counts, but every set of goals should have a BHAG. And the BHAG is your big, hairy, audacious goal that you may or may not attain, but you're always working towards it. So my BHAG was to work DXCC on six meters. Step two, build a six meter station. So you're going to need a three, four, five element Yagi, 100 watts of power, any modern transceiver, and computer for digital work, and an antenna 20 to 25 feet above ground. Now, I like uh, these little photographs here because they show your uh, six meter antenna in their own little personal space because that six meter antenna, when you put it in your stack with all your HF, it just sees those HF antennas as a bunch of reflectors. So I think it's important to keep your antenna in the clear. Now, step three, learn WSJTX. This one's easy because everybody knows uh, this already, but the vast majority of uh, contacts on six meters, especially DX, is going to be um, on with, with FTA or a digital mode. Um, I love my uh, six meter ops here. Uh, we've, uh, they're smoking a pipe and a cigar and uh, they got the newspaper and uh, a highball. So that's the, that's the way it used to be, but things have changed. Uh, FTH is uh, 
number one, uh, the frequencies uh, 5313, but don't forget about 5323. We're seeing a lot of DX on that. Also, Q65. Q65, you're seeing a lot more um, contacts made with Q65. Uh, and if you're doing a schedule, you want to use Q65. It's much more sensitive. Uh, you need a couple other tools. You need a DX alert, PSK reporter. Uh, DX Maps kind of uh, does the same thing as PSK Reporter. Um, and there's a couple other programs besides the WSJTX that, that, that decode the same FTA Q65 modes, uh, JTDX and MSHV. I kind of stick with uh, WSJTX. So step four, let's work some DX. Work the easy ones first. And you wanna be QRV and uh, during the sporadic East season, May, June, July. So you get on and uh, you work uh, the easy ones here, USA, Canada, Mexico, you get United Nations is not that hard if, you, if, if they're active, uh, Alaska and Hawaii, Japan are not difficult at all. Cuba, lots of good stations there. Uh, Jamaica has been very active uh, lately. Uh, you'll pick up a couple other ones and then for sure you're gonna work uh, at Fell in Puerto Rico because he's on every day on six meters. So you tally it all up and you get to 12. Well, maybe things start to slow down a little bit. So step five, build a better six meter station. So you really want, and this is where you get serious. You want a seven, eight or nine element Yagi, or you could, you know, the 11 element Yagi would be a good choice too. Um, one dB a line loss in the feed line. That's not easy to do at 50 megahertz. You're gonna need some big stuff to do it, but figure it out and do it because you, it helps you on receive and transmit. You want a kilowatt of power. That's not to be loud. It's for margin. Uh, you want to put an LNA ahead of your receiver and hope that you need it because you hope you got to be. You hope you're not in a, a noisy place where you can't use it. Any modern transceiver will work. Um, and a lot of the six meter ops are uh, going to uh, a separate receiver like the AirSpy R2 SDR um, run multiple programs decoding in, uh, you know, let's say using three programs, uh, to, three different ones to, to, to decode. So that's an option. Uh, that's out there that a lot of people are going to. And the antenna at 20 to 25 feet above ground, you say, hey, wait, Matt, I just built this nine element Yagi. I am putting it on the top of my tower. Well, higher is not always better. Here is uh, a model at 70 feet above ground, the six meter antenna, 70 feet above ground. Um, you've got a large null from six to 10 degrees. Uh, and that razor sharp deep null at eight degrees uh, is right where you're wanting to, a lot of signals are coming in. Uh, it's got a strong gain down low, um, but the ES clouds are irregular shaped um, and they're bouncing off them in different, uh, and, it, and it varies. It can vary during a, a 15 second transmission. Uh, so uh, that razor sharp uh, uh, lobe can, can really cause a problem for you. And it's also up so high that you're gonna get a lot of man-made noise. You know, the noise is coming from the horizon and uh, that man-made noise, you're gonna hear more of it when you have a high antenna. 
So let's bring it down to 40 feet. It's much better at 40 feet. The large nulls at 12 degrees. Well, you know what? There's still some DX at 12, not so much. Um, you've got three uh, useless upper lobes kind of squirting off some power. The max gains coming in at around eight degrees. That's great. That's very good. Um, and it, it's about three degrees is when you really get into some uh, gain and 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 that's that's pretty good too. Um, and if you if you're in a quiet location, this could be an excellent antenna for you. But let's drop it down to 25 feet above ground and see what happens. I happen to like this elevation. The large knolls moved up to 21 degrees. There's no DX at 21 degrees. You guys still got a useless lobe uh, above it. Um, the gain starting at around five degrees um, and it's max and max is at 10. Those are good. That's good stuff. And um, from uh, according to uh, K9LA, the most frequently incoming signals on six meters are arriving at five to eight degrees. So in this antenna, you're kind of working that bottom half of the lobe. But let's take a look at 20 feet above ground. This is my antenna. It's got a, the deep null went up to 28 degrees. There's no DX at 28 degrees. That, that upper lobe shrunk. It's smaller now. And that bottom lobe got bigger and fatter. It's just fat. It just got fatter. And uh, so you're going to have uh, this continuously strong gain for, uh, with no nulls from 5 to 20 degrees. And this antenna um, has uh, 14 to 19 dBi. So we're getting uh, some really strong gain up at a high, you know, it was like signals coming in at 10 degrees. Um, but the signals that are coming in at the horizon or down a bit. So now let's talk about ground gain. So ground gain can is like doubling your, you can more than double your antenna gain. In optimum conditions, it could be like having four antennas. You can turn your one antenna into four antennas if you can control your ground gain. So this little um, plot, is a six meter antenna at 25 feet with a, uh, at a 10 degree elevation. So that reflection zone starts at around 25 feet away from the, your antenna and goes out to about a thousand. Um, so try to have a reflection zone, flat, uncluttered area in, in that uh, zone and it will, help you a great deal. At my, uh, at my house, the reflection zone, my, my house is in that reflection zone. Um, so I place the antenna, so pointing due north uh, is uh, uh, pointing at the house. So I lose it there. Now, so hear a lot of house noise, um, but there's not much DX due north. So then when I go to, Europe or Asia, I'm looking at my front yard or my backyard. And I can control those reflection zones. Step six, work TEP. TEP is uh, the F layer is getting involved now and it happens near the equinoxes. So that's when you gotta look for uh, TEP. There's very little signal and attenuation in TEP propagation because there's no ground hop in between the stations. So I measured this one at like about 4,600 miles. Um, the peaks uh, happens late afternoon. Propagation is north-south generally. Uh, uh, and they're roughly uh, 
equal distance from the geomagnetic equator. And you're going to look for these TEP openings in March and September. Where's the geomatic, uh, geomagnetic equator? Well, uh, it's not the same as the geographic equator. Um, and it kind of bogs down. You can see here at the, uh, along the west coast of South Africa or South America, you're going to have this thing it, it, where it bogs down. And where it crosses Africa, it's up higher. Well, that, that really plays into what we can do um, uh, with TEP. And I'm going to show you that. But the one thing to remember with TEP is you don't need that super high uh, maximum usable frequency to, to for TEP to work. It needs to be up, but it doesn't need to be high, really super high. So here's a typical TEP opening. Um, and uh, it shows that it excludes uh, whiskey six and whiskey seven. Um, so we've got uh, EUs uh, uh, work in Africa and uh, EUs work in South America. And we've got Mexico, Texas, and Florida working South America. And whiskey six and whiskey seven is just too far from that geomagnetic uh, equator. Uh, and that RF is just heading out into outer space. So we're out here in the dead zone, the ONO zone. So whiskey six and whiskey seven need some help from sporadic E. Uh, the we need, we need some of that six meter magic to happen. Uh, we need an intermediate skip off an of E-cloud uh, to get to that trans-equatorial bulge. Um, you need a high M MUF uh, upwelling uh, that happens in the, at the geomagnetic equator in the afternoon. And we need some sporadic E to happen. So be ready. It's not gonna last long. And I want to say that uh, most uh, six meter QSOs that cross the equator are going to have TB, TEP involved. So magic does happen. Um, Chile on six meters. This was uh, from March this year. It was in the afternoon. I got them in the log. Um, Sporadic E was present. Um, I was working some. XE stations. It's magic, yet it's predictable. So this year, the equinox is uh, March, uh, spring and March uh, uh, 21st, and the fall is September 21st. Uh, the, I, I have been noticing recently in the last few days that there's been uh, TEP openings uh, into uh, South America and also um, to Australia, um, but they haven't reached uh, the West Coast. Uh, I checked the uh, SFI at, on the, the day that I made this QSO and um, it was really interesting. It had spiked uh, at uh, 239 um, and then dropped down to 150. So look for TEP openings to the South Pacific. They happen. Um, here's uh, New Caledonia and New Zealand on six meters. I was in Modesto at the time. They were evening phone QSOs. Then uh, Solar Cycle 24 peaked uh, in April of 2014. So, yeah. And uh, um, so you want to look to the South to South America it, in the spring, I don't, you know, it, you get more South America openings in the spring and you seem to get more uh, South Pacific TEP openings in the fall. And as we approach the, uh, the, the peak of the solar cycle, I think we're gonna see a lot more of these. 
So let's tally up what we've done uh, with our TEP. And we added nine, so we're up to 21. Step seven, work the Caribbean Sea, a treasure trove of six meter DX. And now that area with that new long Yagi and a kilowatt of power, it, it, uh, it's easy reach. Um, you've got a lot of salt water and we are gonna see every season uh, double and triple hop sporadic E. Um, and that's usually gonna happen in the mornings. And if you wanna work DXCC on six meters, you gotta bag as many of these as you can. So if you can work Guadalupe, you can work them all. And uh, so let's tally up our, what we did in uh, the Caribbean and man, 24, pretty good. Put us up to 45. Step eight, go back and work some more Asia. And when sporadic is hot, uh, look to Asia in the late afternoons and evenings. Um, so Jack, BV6, Charlie, Charlie, he's uh, in my log. Uh, that was long haul ES to Taiwan, uh, 6,782 miles. Um, but how's that possible? That's, you know, that's over six hops. Um, something else going on? I don't know. But we're going to talk a little bit more about some strange propagation modes later. But we did some more work. And we added China, um, Korea, and Taiwan, and it got three more. We're up to 48. Step nine, work those West Coast openings into Europe. So you, got, you check your PSK reporter for six meter uh, activity and yes, the West Coast is open to EU. You point your antenna to 33 degrees, um, you run out in the front yard and uh, turn the sprinkler on because you, who knows, it might help. Uh, check the frequency and then check the mode and you listen, 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 and then you hit enable. And this is really fun stuff. And I know a lot of people in the group have done this and this is a gas and it happens every year. It happens in the warnings. They're short openings. Sometimes they last for minutes or seconds. In this particular one on uh, July 11th, uh, I, uh, Germany, Australia, Lithuania, and then Greece, and that's kind of interesting because the Germany, Aust Austria, and uh, uh, Lithuania are, are um, about the same distance. And then that Greece is like one more hop. And then look for these big widespread openings. Sometimes they, it, it seems, doesn't matter which, what direction you point your antenna, you're, you're working everyone. Um, they're magical. Uh, this one was back in uh, July, July 1st of 2021. Uh, I, Europe opened up. Uh, you see the hops getting longer. They're getting to 1,400 miles. We got a highly charged E layer. Uh, and, you know, work Spain, another Spain, Portugal, Spain, Portugal, and then Greenland. Greenland in the log. That was great because I didn't have them. And then magic happens again. Guernsey in the log, England, Ireland. This was all happening uh, June 6th of 2022. Sporadic E was hot. And when it's hot, it's awesome. And boy, step nine is a gas. Long haul ES propagation is brief and many get away. So June 5th, 2022, CQNA, 4Z1UF in Israel. I get the decode, 
right out of the blue. I, I pound away with a kilowatt, but no joy. Been chasing him for years. He has a big station, very active. But then I start looking at this and I go, wait a minute. The only other people I'm decoding is in Charlie Mike 95 and Charlie Mike 96. These are locals. Um, is there something, some other six meter mode happening? Some other kind of propagation? This strange uh, propagation mode uh, we're gonna talk about later. Oh, and then I go, wait a minute. That's probably just a false decode, but no, kind of passes the test. Uh, N6WS decoded him too. I don't know. Well, okay, it's later now. Let's talk about it. This one's July 29, 2022. And uh, Benny in Ecuador is working uh, North America, east of the Mississippi and Japan. Wait, and Japan? No reception port reports in the signal path over Whiskey 6 and Whiskey 7. I'm on six meters. I hear nothing, absolutely nothing. So what's happening? The RF um, from Benny is skipping from E cloud to E cloud. And it's not coming down in uh, Whiskey 6 and Whiskey 7. So this is chordal hops between ES clouds without ground reflections, or maybe it's magic. Long haul sporadic E happens along the E path, uh, along the, the sporadic E hot path. So, you know, more likely you're going to see a, a, a path kind of open up. And this one's kind of cool, I thought, because you can actually see the hops. You can see the the thousand mile hops uh, as it crosses. I was working the uh, whiskey ones, and uh, um, but uh, oh, then guess what? The Canary Islands. So that was fun. Long haul sporadic E. Let's uh, tally up our long haul. Well, we get the big ones, a couple of the smaller ones. We total up 14, we're up to 62. Step 10, take a trip. Okay, so take a trip to the East Coast in June for a month. When you stare at this uh, propagation pattern for years, every June, kind of motivates you. So you use DXC uh, C rule number 9A which says it doesn't matter where you are inside of the 48 states, they all count. And it's like shooting fish in the barrel. Uh, you get, I, I, I've got this uh, JT alert six meter uh, decode string that I had to sit back in my chair and then just, I got to snip this one. And, uh, but to see that happen in front of you, it's, it's, it's a joy. And that's why you made the trip. And Randy discovers magic in Florida. This is, I was on the uh, reflector, um, the FFMA group of reflector in uh, August 6th, sitting over here in the no DX land. And, um, Randy posts this, uh, puts this post in and he says, and Randy's not new to, uh, ham radio, but he says, be new to six meters. I'm not sure what kind of propagation I'm experiencing, but at 12, uh, 30 Sunday, I'm able to work Germany, Netherlands, and England off a simple dipole up 15 feet from Florida. So if you do this, you can build your DXC count 
in a hurry. You have already have a bunch of uh, DXCCs uh, confirmed. They're under your belt. So you hunt for the others and you tally up those, uh, the new ones. It's, you got up to 12, the total is 74 DXCC on six meters. So now we're in the home stretch. You work the easy ones, you work to EP, you got what you could in Asia, you cleaned up in the Caribbean, you bagged the Europe with the long haul, you filled in some missing ones, you're sitting on 74 confirmed entities. Now what? Step 11, learn how to moon bounce. Why do you wanna do this? So you can work this guy. But you say, I don't have an EME station. Yes, you do have an EME capable station if you follow step five, build a better six meter station. But you say, I can't elevate my antenna. Well, you can work EME when the moon is between five and 20 degrees of elevation with your antenna. Now this in Switzerland here, this station on the right, I, I'm uh, there, his initial number 32 in his log. Use the moon as a reflector. We've got good conditions about two or three days a month on moon bounce for six meters. Um, there's other programs out there that can tell you when those good days are like uh, skid maker, uh, moon graph, or you ask me is a couple of months. This, this plot was, I did for January of 2023. So you can find out in advance any time what, what days are good. And there's only a couple, um, in WSJTX, you can also have the astronomical data, um, it's there for you and it's very helpful. Uh, uh, you can see that that tells you where uh, your moon is, that as an elevation of your moon. Um, it'll tell you if you plugged in the, your, uh, your targets uh, uh, call and, and grid locator, it will tell you the DX, uh, azimuth and elevation and down at the bottom there's the degradation when the moon's rising in w6 it's setting in europe and africa so you can work the moon um, up to 20 degrees with your antenna horizontal and if both antennas are horizontal and the moon's down there in that uh, below 15 or 20 degrees, both stations have ground gain. And ground gain is magical on the S, EME, excuse me. The, um, now, if you look here in this little plot I did for South Africa, you can see that my moon elevation A my moon is rising and uh, his moon is setting. And it's fun to get uh, EME decodes like this on a single Yagi. So here's one uh, in 2021 um, where I worked the DX and I'm just listening and to see these kind of uh, decodes kind of roll off, uh, Italy, Scotland, Germany, Netherlands, Slovenia, and Denmark uh, um, in one, one decode sequence is pretty fun. Um, and this is uh, with the, the Q65, which you have on your computer right now. You just have to learn how to use it. You ask, can I work small stations on EME? Yes, you can. Um, you can work, uh, I've worked many single Yagi stations um, with a single Yagi. 
And uh, there's a growing number of EME capable single Yagi stations. And Pop, he, uh, you can work him in Serbia. I've worked him. And um, he uh, also designs antennas. If you're an a antenna builder, he has uh, some really excellent designs that you can build. Step 12, work the world on six meter EME. So just start putting uh, EME stations in the log. How far can you go on six meter EME? There's no limit. Uh, Seychelles, uh, uh, work Seychelles in 2019, uh, Tajikistan, that was a good one. Um, these, uh, you can see, my antenna and uh, uh, the Tajikistan uh, antenna down here. Those were the two antennas that made the QSO, and that's the box on the right using the um, JT65 um, to make the QSO. Halfway around the world on six meters, September 12th. 2022, Mayotte Island. And, uh, um, and I'm showing you down here, I put a red box around when I worked them. And uh, so I did the plot. And, and then when I worked them, I went back and looked. And um, my moon elevation was at eight degrees. Uh, uh, and uh, the DX was at four degrees, made the QSO. We had a degradation at 2.8. Not, not the best, but not bad at all. Bingo, the XCC on six meters. So you work the uh, D expeditions, you work the monster stations, you work the single Yagi stations, you tally them up. And there you are, six meter uh, DXCC. So what's the next BHAG for me? Well, big, hairy, audacious goal number two is going to be the Fred Fish Memorial Award. And I'm sitting at 410 right now. So that's the end of my talk. Uh, questions? I have a question uh, for you, Matt, and six MFT. <clears throat> I noticed on some of those uh, slides that your clock was was really high. Did that have a, a bearing on what you're doing? Uh, you saw like a 2.4, 2.6. Correct. Yes, that's because, Art, that the time from uh, me, uh, uh, for the signal to get to the moon and come back takes two and a, about two and a half seconds. Oh, okay. Right. So that's, it's actually a really good point um, to bring up because um, if, you're, if you're on six meters, there's times when, you know, I'm copying stations and they're trying to work off the moon, but I get, uh, I get a, um, the time delta at like two, you know, like at point three or something. And I go, that, that's not off the moon. And then when I see the 2.4 to 2.6, uh, then I go, okay, that's off the moon. So uh, the, the, all of the EME contacts will have um, the, the delta time at around two and a half degrees okay. or two and a half seconds. Right, right, right. Thank you. Hey, Matt, this is a N5KO. When you took your East Coast road trip, did you work all those guys barefoot or did you take an amplifier with you? I've got a um, KPA 500 um, that has, uh, you know, so I can get 500 watts out of a, 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 a amplifier that plugs into 110. So that's really helpful. I mean, power is really helpful. Yeah, Some, I know and, the radio. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Anybody else? 
Okay, well, we will have uh, a maths recording up on our uh, YouTube channel, uh, the NCDXE YouTube channel, so you can go back and return, re, uh, refer to it as often as possible. It should be up within the next uh, two weeks, I would think. Uh, Matt, thank you thank so much for taking the time. Tony? Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is Bill. I just had one question real quick. If it's Go okay. ahead. Yeah, back, uh, let's see, uh, in July 1st uh, of this year, I've got a lousy six meter antenna. It's part of the DB36. Sits at 55 feet here up in Oregon. And uh, for some reason, I was able to work uh, ZL1RS down there in New Zealand. And uh, I got a, a minus 12 dB, which wasn't bad for me, I guess. But it, it, the opening lasted actually quite a while. And I was wondering uh, what kind of an opening was that, since I'm not all that familiar with the uh, different types of openings between here and New Zealand. The, um, it, that's in, and it was uh, in July. That's correct, July 1st. Yeah. Well, one thing I'll say is that um, on six meters, the most many times, I mean, I'd say uh, you got to work them in, uh, um, in the season, but you never know when you're going to get sporadic E. And what I, uh, and the other thing I see is that generally uh, on these, some of these long hauls that you probably have a mixture of, of uh, did you check what the uh, SFI was on that day? Uh, I have no idea right now. I don't know. Yeah, yeah we could probably check. We could check if it was July first. But um, you probably were, you know, had some TEP happening and some sporadic E that's still in the sporadic E season, and so it was a mixture of the two. Is what I thought I, it was just magic. So <laughs> yeah, it, it it probably was just magic. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it, <laughs> but. But, but it's amazing, and I see really, it's interesting, you see really odd things, too, like, uh, um, you know, like, it's some, and I think what's happening is sometimes, especially with TEP, it'll kind of go up there and get caught and then shoot down, and you never know where it'll come down. Right. But uh, I would assume that your QSO was a, a mixture of sporadic E and TEP. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I was running 500 watts to this the uh, lousy six meter antenna on the db36 so yeah that's the thing with with uh tep is is it it um it does not a lot of attenuation and so you don't need it you, you can do it with uh, you know it just it the conditions have to be right not you know it's not so much a power and antenna right well thank you okay anybody else all right. Well, again, thank you, Matt, for uh, sharing your your uh, your expertise uh, with uh, six meters and working DXEC. Uh, again, the uh, recording of this program will be up on the uh, YouTube channel for Northern California DX Club, uh, probably within the next week and a half to two weeks. Uh, so, again, uh, uh, barring any other questions, we'll continue with our program.